Dear listeners, we've had a lot of positive feedback about the movie Rejecting Islam. It contains a great deal of information that require concentration and the repeated use of the pause button to absorb. Many of our audience had to watch and listen to it more than once to appreciate its contents. Thank you for your support. When these contradictions and absurdities are pointed out to Mohammedans, they resort to their classical rough and ready idiotic retort that the Bible had been altered and corrupted without having the slightest idea as to which Bible or even which part of any Bible they are thinking of. When we ask them to show us the uncorrupted original upon which they are asserting their case, we get the blank stares of the mentally demented or a deafening silence. Al-Ma'idah 5.116 And behold, Allah will say, O Jesus, the son of Mary, didst thou say unto men, Worship me and my mother as gods in derogation of Allah? Al-Hadid 57.27 Then in their wake we followed them up with others of our apostles. We sent after them Jesus, the son of Mary, and bestowed on him the gospel. This verse finally and clearly explains Muhammad's erroneous understanding of the Trinity. It is not the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but the Father, Allah, the Son, Jesus, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. The all-knowing Muhammad failed miserably yet again to comprehend the fundamentals of Christianity, although they lived in Arabia as his neighbors. We ask the question once more, how is it intellectually acceptable to believe that it was the real angel Gabriel revealing all these mendacities, anomalies, errors and contradictions to Muhammad? It is of course simpler to accept that it was Satan who was revealing them. Better still, the only logical and realistic conclusion that we have addressed in numerous chapters of ours is that every single letter, ayah, verse and surah chapter in the Quran are uniquely Muhammad's alter ego, his autobiography, cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah to give them the aura of sanctity. Al-Saf 61.6 And Jesus, the son of Maryam, said, Children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you, confirming that which was revealed before me in the Torah, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, the praised one. But when he came to them with clear signs, they said, this is sorcery. As anyone who has read the Gospels or the New Testament would know, the name Ahmad does not occur in any of them. This being the case, Muhammad's followers were left with no choice but to find, by hook or by crook, a word or a sentence in the New Testament to prove the Quranic verse. Let me share with you what one of the best authorities on the Quran, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, explains in his note, 5438 regarding the verse above. Ahmad or Muhammad, the praised one, is almost a translation of the Greek word parakletos. In the present Gospel of John, 14.16, 15.26, and 16.7, the word comforter in the English version is for the Greek word parakletos, which means advocate, one called to help of another, a kind friend, rather than comforter. Our doctors contend that Parakletos is a corrupt reading for Parakletos, and that in their original saying of Jesus, there was a prophecy of our prophet Ahmad by name. Even if we read Paraklet, it would apply to the holy prophet, who is a mercy for all creatures, most kind and merciful to the believers. Believers and unbelieving kuffar, please note the incredible arrogance and abysmal mendacity of Yusuf Ali. He first tells us, that Ahmed or Muhammad, the praised one, is almost a translation of the Greek word parakletos. Firstly, why use the word almost? Either it is or it is not. It cannot be almost. Secondly, he is telling us our doctors contend, that is, what the so-called scholars of Muhammad and Islam have concluded about the language of the Greeks. Here we have an Arabic speaker instructing us as to what some words in the Greek language should mean. He is not translating the Greek words. He is telling us what they should mean so that they fit in with his agenda. The same Muhammadans who accused anyone who does not know the Arabic language of the Quran as being ignorant 
and has no right to explain the Quranic verses, have the goal and audacity to tell the Greeks what their words actually mean so that they fit Muhammad's Quran. No matter how the followers of Muhammad attempt to contort or distort facts and reality, the name Ahmad in any language does not exist either in the New Testament or in the Hebrew Bible. Muhammad was never predicted in either of them. Al-A'raf 7.157 Those who follow the Apostle, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scripture, in the law and the gospels, for he commands them what is just and forbids them of what is evil. The translator of the Quran in this case also was the extremely learned Abdullah Yusuf Ali. His knowledge of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament was superb. He quotes repeatedly chapter and verse from these books, the very same that are allegedly corrupted to explain the otherwise incomprehensible Quranic verses. Nonetheless, this learned man would stoop to any abysmal level of deception, contortion of history and religion, as well as the perversion of language in his attempt to explain the unexplainable Quran. Let me share with you his explanations of this verse and those that follow. He asserts, in this verse is a preferring to Moses of the Arabian messenger, the last and greatest of the messengers of Allah. Prophecies about him will be found in the Torah and the Injil, Gospels. In the reflex of the Torah, as now accepted by the Jews, Moses says, The Lord thy God will raise unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Deuteronomy 18.15 The only prophet who brought a sharia like that of Moses was Muhammad al-Mustafa, and he came of the house of Ismail, the brother of Isaac, the father of Israel. In the reflex of the gospel, as now accepted by the Christians, Christ promised another comforter, John 14.16. The Greek word paraclete, which the Christians interpreted as referring to the Holy Spirit, is by our doctors taken to be paraclite, which would be the Greek form of Ahmed. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like those of our listeners who are followers of Moses or Jesus to understand the term reflex used by Yusuf Ali. According to Muhammad and Muslim scholars, the books that we have today, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, are not the originals, but are the ones that have been altered and perverted and hence are inauthentic. Only in the wishful thinking and mentally disturbed thinking and self-inflicted deception of the followers of Muhammad could they assert that Muhammad was ever mentioned or predicted anywhere in the Torah, especially since he is not of the descendants or of the seed of Isaac. The biblical verse mentioned above pertained only to the descendants of Jacob Israel, of whom Moses was one, and to no other branch of the family of Abraham. The Arabian Muhammad, after all, is allegedly descended from Ishmael, and hence cannot be the one among those predicted. Neither is Muhammad mentioned anywhere in the New Testament, no matter how his followers, in great desperation, try their worst to contort the Greek language, deform history, and twist logic to fit their perverted agenda. Besides, I would like our listeners to know that from the death of Moses to the advent of Muhammad, there were numerous other Hebrew prophets, every one of them, was a descendant from the line of Isaac, all of them Jews, but not one of them from the seed of Ishmael. In fact, the Torah very clearly and prophetically instructs the Israelites. Deuteronomy 13.2 and 4. If there arises amongst you a prophet or a dreamer urging you to follow other gods, pay no attention to the words of that prophet or dreamer. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 5.277, narrated by Abu Huraira. The prophet said, had only 10 Jews believed me, all the Jews would definitely have believed me. Muhammad, the false prophet, for prophet, fitted this description so completely that among the tens of thousands of Judaized Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula, not even 10 individuals were willing to follow him even upon pain of death. The modern followers of Muhammad, as you read their comments on our chapters, have absolutely no idea as to which Bible they are alluding to. They are utterly out of their intellectual depths because of their appalling lack of knowledge of these subjects. The Torah are the five books of Moses that Allah revealed to him directly at Mount Sinai. They have not changed by an iota in the last 2,200 years, taking into account the Dead Sea Scrolls of Umm Qumran. 
not an iota. The Quran repeatedly and unambiguously asserts in several verses and chapters that Allah uses the incorruptible Torah, Taurat, as a witness to the veracity of the Quran. According to rabbinic traditions, the Torah is preserved with God on tablets. Muhammad, the pirate of the desert, plagiarized this idea and used it for his Quran also as Lawhun Mahfuz, preserved tablet.